Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny, to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up as I give a recap of the season six, episode 12 of How to Get Away with Murder, Let's Hurt Him. We'll do a quick recap. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> So we pick up where the last episode left off, where Gabriel is trying to fill everybody in, Oliver, Connor, and Michaela, and letting them know that he has seen the killer, the person who killed Asher. He previously thought it was Laurel, but said, you know, based upon height and dark hair, he just put that in his head and that she always came by their residence. But he said, no, I know that it is Agent Pollard. Like, I saw her with my own eyes. And of course, everybody gets frustrated. And we, of course, have Oliver that tells him to leave. And after he leaves, he's telling everybody, like, I kind of I kind of believe him. Like, this is something that we need to take serious. And they start to put in their heads that maybe the FBI is listening and we should take this a little bit more seriously. In between that, we do see Connor taking jogs and he sees that a black SUV is telling him and he believes that that is the FBI keeping dibs on everything that they do. We then go to the courthouse, Tegan and Annalise, they're ready to go into the courtroom and we do see the lawyer, Robert, who really had an interest in Annalise earlier in the season and Annalise really wasn't feeling him because he kind of seemed a little forceful. He came out of nowhere and she really couldn't trust what he was saying so in this episode it had kind of had that same energy that you're popping up out of nowhere you're coming before our court hearing and you're offering your services and he's saying no I'm not FBI and Deegan says you know well are you because it just seems that you're just offering your services just all kind of random and Annalise can feel that it's something wrong and Tegan just says look just go somewhere else you know we got this we don't need your help at this time and he just pleads and says that I'm a good lawyer and just let me on this case but they're not having it when they get to the courthouse it's very evident that the FBI seems like they're up to more than what they're saying Tegan wants more of a range um, in where she can go concerning Annalise's house arrest. She wants Annalise to be able to not just be allowed to be in her home, but extending the expansion in her coming to her office so they can go over more information. But come to find out, the FBI wants to give the capital murder case, the death penalty, and now this is a federal case. And Tegan is just like, whoa, like this is insane that these charges are coming out of nowhere. They defend the case and it's nothing that they can do at this point. And the judge allows these charges to keep pending until further information comes along. So Frank has Xavier and it's really, really this intimidating scene. And what's really interesting is that Xavier lets him know, hey, you're fighting a battle and you're going along with information that doesn't make any sense. Laurel, you know, she uses people and you're after her and you're doing all of this for her. Like, why? And Frank makes it known that he has somebody else in his life. It's not that. But Xavier knows that he's done stuff in the past, that he's the one that did the accident that ended up hurting Annalise and uh, further down the line she lost her son unfortunately so there's this information going back and forth that hey I know that you've been working with Agent Pollock what can you tell me you need to give me more information if you want to live Annalise goes further and further into the rabbit hole of lies and she sees how everything isn't adding up and how the FBI wants to take her down. And Annalise says, you know what, what's smart is if we use all of the resources. So she reaches out to the media and expresses that, hey, the FBI and the government are working together um, and their open, uh, their ultimate goal is to lock me up because look at what I've done in the past. I'm fighting for equal rights. I'm fighting for justice. I'm fighting for those who are unproportionately put in jail because of their ethnicity. So look at what they're doing. If you have any information, be sure to call in, give us in, any information, and we're going to have this fight. We're going to fight for justice and look at what they're doing to me. And Tegan sees this as a really good selling point because she does have a point. What is 
is the FBI and what is the government trying to do and why are they putting all these charges specifically on Annalise and trying to take her down? Michaela's dad comes to visit and he's upset that she wants out of her deal that he made. And he's, Anna, Michaela wants to know, did you give up Annalise? And he says, well, yeah, I gave her up because I'm thinking about you. I would give up anybody when it comes to um, my daughter. And he believes that the FBI would keep uh, Michaela safe. And Michaela was previously conflicted, but he seems like he's coming from a dad's perspective, but it's really still kind of shady. And it's very evident that he wants to take her down as well. And one of the questions that I wanted to know is how did he know where Annalise was in order to give her up to the FBI? That's very, 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 very shady. And it raises a lot of red flags on my end. Annalise wants to let Nate know, hey, they found Xavier. And if you are able to get the information that you need from Xavier, this is the guy that killed your dad. This is the guy that's the real threat. Who do you hate more? Do you hate me more or the guy that killed your father? Pick a side. Look at what's going on. You're putting your trust in the government and they can't be trusted. You're putting your trust in the FBI and they are telling us and showing us over and over again that they cannot be trusted. Choose wisely. Nate goes to Xavier and Xavier is trying to tell him that it's unfortunate that your dad was pretty much a pawn, but this is all politics. Your father died for politics. They were making a statement to everyone and letting them know how much power that they had and what they were trying to do. You getting rid of me or you killing me doesn't stop the overall picture of what happened. And I'm sorry that your father had to die, but you know, there are powers that be and there's nothing that I could do about it. But what you can do is you can let me go and don't kill me because there's so much more that you don't know. After having a briefing, they are able to get the death penalty dropped towards Annalise because there's a lot that they learn when Michaela and Connor go to Annalise. They say, hey, we have a recording that can prove that you were set up. This is something that the government is trying to put on you. We made a deal with the devil. We're sorry. You need to forgive us. We do have a tape recording of someone saying that, hey, I know who the killer is. I know this. I know that. And Annalise is smart because what she does is she's not depending on Michaela and Connor to give her this recording. She records it herself and presents this to the FBI and the judge as they're going over the information. It's also proof that they did anything that they could to persuade Michaela and Connor into taking this plea in order to take Annalise down. So that is the good thing that the death penalty was dropped. Nate is so frustrated about everything and doesn't analyze how Xavier can be a help to him in Annalise, the case. He uses his emotion once again and doesn't think with a straight mind, and he snaps Xavier's neck. Um, and this frustrated me as the viewer because Nate is not thinking rationally. He's going off of his emotions. And when he calls... When he when he gives that call to say, hey, I'm, you know, I did what I had to do. You know, Frank is like, what did you do, Nate? What, what, what did you do? Because Nate knows that he doesn't think rationally. He thinks with emotion. And he's trying to tell him, look, Nate, he is more of a collateral for us. And he can give us more information than you think. So what did you do? Then we see... Um, Vivian, who's very annoying, <laughs> Vivian wants to tell Annalise that I know the real reason why they want to take you down. I know who's behind everything. And it's Hannah. Hannah is the one who started this whole mess and wanted to take you down. And I'll give you more information, but I need to make sure that you can protect Gabriel. And Annalise is just like, I didn't give any information to the police and letting them know who the informant was, what they know. So I've protected him several times. So just stop with all of that. But Vivian says that there's more. And of course, we'll have to wait until the next episode to find out exactly what Hannah was going after and what was the whole starter upper of this whole thing and trying to take Annalise down. 
I just don't see it's going to take amazing writing. We only have two episodes left, you guys. And I'm just so excited to know what is going to happen. Will Annalise have it set up to where she just knocks all of the dominoes down and puts all the cards down and releases information about everyone at one time because everyone's so frustrated that Michaela, Oliver, Connor, just, you know, Asher before he died, everybody always had a handout and she would always help everyone and people would still be mad at Annalise. So how is she going to get out of this and how is the series gonna end i'm just so baffled and i just so clueless about how this will end will end let me know what you think subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and also follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e until next time make sure to check out more television show recaps and reviews as well as movies i'll see you next time bye